innovative. Empowering. Capacity. Partnership. Integrity. Fabulous. The name really came from a book that was written by an Indigenous Canadian researcher called Research is Ceremony and it was an important book that he wrote after conversations with researchers in Canada and Australia who were Indigenous um, to articulate how research should be treated like a ceremony that the relationships in the ceremony are critical and um, the higher purpose of the ceremony and all of those kinds of lessons that you have from what makes a powerful ceremony can translate into what makes for good and valuable and higher purpose research. My name is Elizabeth Rink and I'm an associate professor at Montana State University in the Department of Health and Human Development. And I began working with the Fort Peck tribes in 2006, the end of 2006, the beginning of 2007, I had to meet frequently with the Fort Peck Tribal Council. We started talking about the need to really build the research capacity of the Fort Peck tribes and to establish an institutional review board for the Fort Peck people. There became an opportunity to apply for a grant with the National Institute of Health to actually, that would actually build the research infrastructure of the Fort Peck tribe. So there was actually a, a opportunity to get funding to really focus on um, teaching people here at the tribe how to do research and, and how to, to grow their own research capacity. We started working on this very big research project to um, help the tribal people monitor their own research. So there were six, six or seven objectives with, the, with that project um, that focused on training people here at the tribe to do their own research building the resources at the library that at that time was under construction. We needed a, a, a location or a central place where researchers could go to, to find all of the information and the protocols necessary for researchers to conduct res their research at Fort Peck. You know, we're, we're an Indian reservation and we want to make sure that when researchers come that they follow our protocols. And so um, we developed a policy and procedures for our for researchers when they come. And um, we have it all posted up on our webpage. Starting an internship program with the college that would help train young um, tribal members in how to do research and they would work on their own research projects. I changed the title over to How Solid Waste Affect Soil and Groundwater. Um, my concern was the illegal dump sites throughout most reservations and also the landfills and how they've grown since 1985 when EPA stepped in and perhaps a lot of the health problems that our people have may come from our waste, our buried waste and there's a lot of things like cancer, birth defects, um, infertility, you know, there's a lot of issues going on with our people and it came to me that perhaps it has to do with our past practices of solid waste disposal. My name is Jacob First. I am a student intern for the Ceremonies of Research at FPCC and I do mainly research into microalgae being used as a biofuel. Biofuel is um, a fuel made from organic matter and it's renewable. So I thought, you know, one of the reasons we brought him back was to have this relationship established, this emotional tie, this not just uh, an economic tie, but a psychological and emotional tie. And I wondered how that could be accomplished if our people couldn't see them or touch them or smell them or, you know, uh, watch them. And so I, I mentioned this to 
during uh, the initial stages of the Project Advisory Board to the people from Montana State that I really would like to see a research project that's involved uh, uh, finding out if there really is this connection, this uh, psychological, emotional connection between the people uh, and the Buffalo people. And if that could really help us somehow in, in, in uh, dealing with suicide or dealing with alcoholism or some of those issues that involve the emotions and psychological uh, behaviors. We also were going to train people in how to write grants, how to do grant reporting, how to kind of apply for, for large research grants. One of the project aims was to establish a Fort Peck Tribes Institutional Review Board and that can provide oversight and ethical review of all health research that's conducted on the Fort Peck Reservation. My name is Johnny Lee Berk of Stiff Arm and I've been a committee member for almost two years with the IRB. We as uh, Nakota and Dakota people for this reservation are taking the responsibility to ensure that any type of research done on human subjects, which is our people, is, uh, comes within our purview and it is our responsibility to review that to make sure any positive things that can come from that to help heal our nation is something we can help take ownership of and to make sure that our people are not abused and they're not used and that we are portrayed in a truthful manner uh, rather than uh, a manner that would um, cause us more harm. In our IRB meeting, we, do the, we go over our minutes from our previous meeting. We go over new research uh, applications that have come before us. Uh, we discuss those, the pros and cons of them, how they will help us, how they're going to be carried out. We take a look at the different uh, criteria of the types of questions they're going to be asking. We analyze the language that's within those uh, uh, questionnaires, how it will be, the research will be conducted and carried out in our communities, uh, what, the, um, what they're going to do with the results, how it's going to be portrayed in that. Uh, we determine whether there are uh, uh, the fee will apply to them or in certain instances based upon the subject matter and based upon the relevance and importance to our cultural identity and our cultural health. We may exempt the fee, but we do charge a fee because we feel strongly that we have been taken advantage of so many times in the past that we have received nothing for all the research that has been done on us and now we want to have some uh, control of that research and we want to have access to the research that's done and their findings and in addition to that we feel strongly that we deserve to charge a fee because we're very special and we're very unique. There's nobody else in the world like us that are here at Fort Peck. We also established a project advisory board for the whole for the whole project so um, and we used a community-based participatory research approach where we worked with this community advisory board to help us make decisions about everything on that board were several individuals uh, not just from the college but also from uh, the tribal areas and tribal health and we were all uh, asked to be on the, on the project advisory board by the coordinators of the grant from Montana State University and uh, the coordinators of the grant from Fort Peck Community College. It was a cooperative joint venture between Montana State University, which is known for its research and its institutional review board, well known, and uh, Fort Peck Community College and Fort Peck Tribes. The Project Advisory Board has, um, they have kind of oversaw the whole project from the start. Uh, they help develop and approve the policies and procedures, um, the ethical guidelines, uh, and they've also helped identify the current IRB members. First process was to get us all on the advisory board, all trained in the uh, uh, rules and regulations and standards and practices of research. And so we all had to uh, uh, become familiar with and pass a, a test called the uh, the city test. It's called the for credentials in in research. A big part of our job it was the beginning stages. So we had to um, do a lot of education to our leadership, which is the tribal executive board, um, about what an IRB is and what it could mean to the people of Fort Peck. So the PAB's advisory board's main objective was to develop these 
uh, foundational documents like a charter, okay, and processes and procedures manuals for applying for research on the Fort Peck Preservation through the Institutional Review Board. All of the information that's gathered on our people now is part of the tribal uh, archives now, and we've started our own uh, IRB archives. So any research that's done, it may belong to the researchers, but it also belongs to us. We did a series of focus groups um, about three years ago where we talked to people all over the reservation about what was important to them with, the, with research and what they thought research was, what kind of research they wanted to see happen, and what they needed from outside researchers like myself in order to feel, in order to feel safe. We had to do focus groups to kind of gain a community perspective on research and um, also kind of start the dialogue as to um, how a relationship between a researcher and the community, like what it looks like. People would talk about how um, it's important that the researchers spend time in the community and that was something that in the focus groups the people here really talked about, that if you really want to know who we are and you really want to understand a problem that we're having, watch, listen. It was uh, refreshing to see that a lot of people do care about what goes on on our reservation. The other, the other piece of the focus groups that was important was, um, was just how outside researchers really need to understand the history of tribal communities by doing that, you gain a deeper understanding of why maybe people act the way they do or their behaviors are the way they are. It's not just about what we're seeing right here, right now. And so by going in the community, showing them um, that we wanted to hear from them, that their perspectives were going to be utilized, and that there was in fact going to be a product of an IRB after this um, whole process was finished, that showed them that, you know, this was for them, but this was also from them. Another point that was brought up in the focus groups was the need to give back, whether it's with your own heart or your own time, or it's um, some sort of incentive. It can't be any longer where a researcher just comes in and kind of does their thing and then leaves. I do feel that it was a success. Now we now have an organized method for researchers to come to Fort Peck and look at our web page and have all the information, all the protocols, all the forms and who to contact. It's all there on the web page. You know, in my mind, we started talking about having an institutional review board in 2006, 2007 when I first started coming up here. And now, lo and behold, seven years later, it's here. And I think that the Project Advisory Board did exactly what it was supposed to do. And just being a part of those baby steps to just even educate about the importance of an IRB and now coming full circle and being an IRB member, I believe it's an, a success. I feel that all of the objectives of our ceremony or research project have been met. I feel that it was a resounding success. I feel that uh, it not only met the objectives, but it exceeded the objectives, the expectations. It works. I feel the money has been well spent. The reason why I feel that way is because our community now knows that they can control the research that gets conducted at Fort Peck. This grant afforded uh, our tribe an opportunity to express their sovereignty in an even uh, greater way, and I think that by developing the capacity within our grant that this money was well spent. Anytime you spend money on people's health and development of their society, uh, then it's money well spent. The money to do the Ceremony of Research Project was very well spent and um, spent with intention and thoughtfulness and a lot of um, honoring of what for the Fort Peck tribal people wanted to have happen.